and back. And, you know, I had to get me a little tea uh, <laughs> in between um, the commercials. <clears throat> and while I'm thinking about it, I want to ask all of you, I don't know how you listen to the podcast, but <clears throat> I know on iHeart and iTunes and and uh, other platforms like that, you have an opportunity to give a review. I would love for you to give you, uh, give me a five-star review. I know that the Think, Believe, and Manifest talk show is a show of excellence. And uh, just write your opinion and give me a good rating, and I appreciate it so that <clears throat> I can reach more people. That's what it's about. So we are on action step number six, OMG. So I got to make sure I watch my time. <clears throat> So what I'm saying is that if you would implement these habits in your life, that you will begin to really begin living and creating your best life. You're not waiting on God. God is giving you the authority and the power. So I had to get me a little tea in between. My throat is a little raspy, but it's all good. So habit number six is Stop waiting and take action. So a lot of people criticized the Law of Attraction movie, The Secret, because they were like, well, you know, it wasn't really complete. But yes, it was certainly a great beginning point. But I believe that action is the energy behind your intention. So it's kind of like if somebody says to you, your house is on fire. Your neighbor calls you and you say, I smell some smoke. What are you going to do? You're going to move. Why? Are you going to take action? <clears throat> because your intention is to what? Get out of that house. I always say the action is the gas that fuels the law of attraction. So in other words, it's not enough just to focus on your intention. You know, that first thing that you wrote down at the beginning of the show, of my first show, you must also take action. So we're not praying and waiting on God. Some people hiding behind God. Uh-uh, I'm talking to you. We're not waiting to hear a word from God. We're not saying, is that me or is that God? And I'm going to say, is it good or is it bad? If it's good, it's for you. And, and for all of my Christian folk out there, you, you know, go ahead and begin moving in the direction. And since the spirit of God is in all of us, if you're not going in the right direction, the spirit will say no. You'll get a hunch of intuition on the inside to move forward. And, you know, every major move in my life, uh, <clears throat> there's a verse in the Bible that says that there is wisdom uh in the multitude of counselors. Now, that's what it says in the Bible. I'm not saying that because I'm a therapist, but every major move, I always get input from my mentors. So my question to you is, what action can you begin to take today that will move you toward that intention that you wrote down? So we talk about, I've talked about baby habits. You, you know, I'm big on that. And atomic habits. It doesn't have to be big, but there is no such thing as the perfect moment or the perfect timing. <clears throat> well, I'm going to do this, Constance, when the kids get grown. I'm going to do this once I lose weight. Well, I'm going to travel, you know, uh, once I do that. I, I have a know a person and this is their first time traveling alone and she was so nervous I'm like what are you afraid of and so I said open up and so she went on the trip and she had an amazing time she interacted with people she made some lifelong friends and so somebody said that action is the greatest antidote for fear so what have you been putting off and putting off and putting off for the perfect timing because there is no such thing? And I have a mantra, if not now, when? When are you going to do something? When are you going to go and look at the house? When are you going to go and look at your credit? When, when, when? God is waiting on you. As I said, all possibilities and probabilities exist. And God has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. And you, you have to take the action. So you got to first thing, eliminate all excuses. Now, I heard Serena Williams say, is she the goat or what? 
I heard Serena Williams say that she had to eliminate all excuses. Well, I grew up in Compton for my international people. I think Compton for some people is like, you know, just the poor side of California. Well, I'm black. And at that time, no African-American people. Uh, I, I think Arthur Ashe and there was a couple of other people. I can't think of the female's name, but <clears throat> there were not any dominant uh, female players African-American female players at the time and their dad was their coach but but Serena said she eliminated all excuses and so what what is what has been your excuse for not taking action uh, somebody sent me an email today and they said I, can, I have a job she just got a job and then she said but somebody else offered me one should I look at it absolutely you know, you're always exploring, you're unpacking, you're discovering. Uh, the Bible says you go from glory to glory. That's level to level. So always explore opportunities because there are unlimited possibilities and opportunities available for you. So eliminate all excuses because when you hold on to your excuse, well, once I lose weight, well, I'm too old, I'm not the right color, I don't have the education, you're looking for a reason to delay taking action. I think it's, it's out of fear. It's fear-based. So I had a client, have a client, and she has a business. And so she would occasionally go to these um, exhibitions or pop-ups. So you have to take your own little tent and then put your products out there. So the first time she went, she was a little anxious simply because she didn't know how to put up her tent. I mean, I wouldn't either. I mean, how do you how, how do you unfold this thing? <laughs> and so I said, well, just go. And interestingly enough, when she got there, somebody helped her. And she learned. I'm just saying you got to eliminate the excuses. And she did it over and over and over again. So the time came when she was able to help somebody else put up their tent. Why? Because she had become a master at it. Somebody said to Denzel Washington, boy, you're just the greatest actor. And he said every great actor at one time didn't know how to act. So I'm saying to you, Every great homeowner at one time didn't know how they were going to get the home. Every great person opening up their heart to love at one time didn't think that they could. Eliminate all excuses. If you want to live your best life, some of y'all are bored. You're bored at work. You're bored at home. You, you know there's more to life. You live in this routine, boring life because of F-E-A-R, fear. And, and I, I've had people say, well, you know, I would go online with my goods, products, and our services concepts, but, 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 but I'm afraid to put myself out there. Why? Well, I'm afraid of what other people are going to think. So? You know, a lot of times you've heard me mispronounce words. I've even mispronounced uh, a, a guest name and I had practiced it all week. And, you know, it might have been a very difficult name, but I moved through it and I said, I am so sorry. I just butchered your name. Please share with, with listeners the correct pronunciation of your name. And so... If I had waited for the perfect time to start this show, you guys know I started the show at a very low place in my life. I was depressed, despondent, didn't know if I want to live. I had a broken foot, was in a wheelchair, uh, had just uh, just been told I'm not going to get married, had moved into a beautiful new condo, couldn't unpack my boxes because I couldn't move. I mean, was that the perfect timing to start a show? Absolutely not. But the spirit whispered to me. And, and so, see, some of y'all, when you take action and when you eliminate all excuses, it pulled me out of the deep, dark place that I was. So what's your excuse? 
And so there is no such thing as a perfect moment. That's fear, fear of failing. And I'm telling people, uh, failure is a part of success. I saw that somewhere this week. It's a part of success. Once again, going back to Serena Williams, you know, she said that all the mass matches that she lost, she would go back and review them and that would bring her next time to a higher successful level. Everybody get that? So take your baby atomic step, get out of your comfort zone, go and look at the house, go and look at the car. Open up your heart to love again. Whatever it is, you have the power to choose that. So you can't just meditate and pray and speak the word and all of that. You have to take action. So I'm going to say, take your first step. And you're not going to, you're not going to know the whole vision. <laughs> Sorry. So take your first step. And you may be nervous. You've heard me say almost everything I did. I, it, it was in fear initially. So take your first step. I think it was Dr. Martin Luther King said, take your first step. And you may not know the whole way how to get to the staircase. You know, I know that's not correct, but y'all get the picture. Because you're not going to achieve it in one full swoop. You're not going to know the whole vision. But as you move. Uh, Henry David Thoreau said, begin moving in the general direction of what you want. And as you do, more will be revealed to you. So really, success is a journey that takes uh, that takes place over time. So you got to learn how to reframe your thinking around mistakes, no such thing, uh, and learn how to fail forward faster. OK. That's not right. Let me try something else. You know how many times I've had to revamp this show? You don't even want to know that. So taking action. What else do I want to say about that? Um, overcoming fear. Somebody said the greatest antidote for fear is action. A and so take your first step. Do the best that you can. Start where you are. You can't start where somebody else is. You got to start where you are. I'm going to say make regular small baby steps. Think big, but start small. And the more consistent you are with all of these habits, because your habits really create your world, the quicker your world is going to shift and change. Uh, don't fear starting over, having to re reframe, revise, do it differently like I did. Uh, you know, there are so many learning opportunities with starting small and slow and steady wins the race. All right. So that is habit number six. I bet you, you can't guess what our last habit is. <laughs> our last habit is. Be sure to factor in God or spirit every single day. Dr. Wayne Dyer, God rest his soul, he said the biggest lie that we've ever been told is that we're separate from God. So no matter what your intention is, what your dream is, God said he would give you the desires of your heart. Somebody said, well, Constance, I'm not a Christian. I'm not spiritual. What, do you believe in energy? Yes. Do you believe in nature? Yes. Whatever you believe in. AA says you, you come to believe in a power, power higher than you. Do you believe in a power higher than you? Okay, then I'm talking about that. So that spirit is the one who gave you that desire, that dream that you wrote out at the at the first at the beginning of the first part of my show, you a uh, part one last week. So you so you don't know how. So that loving, giving spirit is on the inside of you. And I think that for me, many times I forgot about it and tried to make the dream or the desire or the intention come to pass by my little doggone self. 
and I struggled uh, uh, and I went back and forth because that spirit knows all wisdom, all knowledge, all of the how-tos, all of the resources that you need in order to continue to move forward. And so every day, I think you need to be aware of that that spirit, you're one with God and one with all there is. So if 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 your goal and our intention is to is is to attract love, just factor in that and every day you might just want to say, uh, Spirit of the universe, God, Holy Spirit, uh, I'm just acknowledging that I'm one with you. And that today you are guiding, empowering, giving me the strength and give me the wisdom that I need for this goal and or intention. You see that? And sometimes I'll even say, God, I'm inviting in. I'm aware of the grace of God. The, what's the grace of God? The ability and the power of God, because you're not going to do this by yourself. You are not going to do, you can, but it's going to be a struggle. So it's kind of like if you're at the gym and, and you're lifting weights and you have a spotter behind you. And, and, and if the weight gets too heavy, I've seen so many times at the gym that the person will help you lift the weight over your head. And that's what the spirit is, the spotter behind you, really doing the work. Uh, you know, Joel Osteen said that God is behind the scenes, rearranging things on your behalf. So if you've tried to lose weight and you just like conscious, I'm 100 pounds overweight, what am I going to do? Remember to become aware and invite in that spirit who knows the right pathway. Everybody has their own pathway to healing, their own pathway to love. Uh, uh, let's just say you've been on every dating website that there is, and now you've gone in and done your own inner work. That's a whole nother show. But but I tell people, you're not on the website to get. You really own the website to receive, to receive who you are. I am a loving woman who deserves happiness and love or whatever your mantra is. You see that? So you're inviting in that grace. And, and sometimes that's why it's so important to sit in stillness because that spirit, the universe, wants to give you direction where you could say, hmm, I think I'm going to call that. That spirit is the one thing that will give you the courage and the strength I'm going to go over here and look at this house today or whatever it is. So those are the seven habits that every day, if you would consistently do them, be them, uh, implement them, I, 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 I guarantee it would change your life and manifest anything. So what are they again? Uh, you know, get clear about your intention. We talked about thoughts become things. What's your thinking around your intention? Y'all go back and listen to it. The power of your words. What are you saying all day long and feeling? I talked about associations like Bernie Mac says, who you with? Who's in your life right now? Who do, who do you need to release? Who do you need to let go of? That's important. And then gratitude. You're grateful for the life that you have and what's on this way. You, you heard some of the scientific research. Y'all need to share this with some of your friends. Copy the link right now and share it with somebody. This is this is life changing. And I'm not saying just because I'm teaching it. I'm saying it because it's the truth. I mean, gratitude is so powerful. It, it, it grows the telomeres at the end of your DNA that supposedly diminish with age. 
but when Dr. Joe Dispenda did the research, <laughs> he said that within four days, when people were 10 minutes radically grateful, their immune system boosted 50%. That's a whole nother show. And of course, today, number five, I'm talking about your imagination. So powerful. Everybody got where I'm coming from? Six, you got to take action. That's the part of the law of attraction. And then just seven, the awareness, the inviting in, not that you have to invite God in, but the awareness that the most powerful, loving, spiritual, uh, all-knowing, all-wise presence is on the inside of you. It's within you. Wow, this has been so good. I know a lot of you say, Constance, we want you to teach more. Well, you got it, baby. You got me back to back last week and this week. I have some great guests coming up. And some of you say to me, if you're not teaching Constance, I'm not listening. And you better stop that because <laughs> I have some powerful folk coming on. And I could teach every week, but I want to give you a variety. I want to give you wisdom. I want to give you different perspectives. I want to give you different insight um, where you can shift and change. And remember, it's not what you hear that changes you. You know, the Bible says faith come by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. But really, it's what you do with what you hear. So with this, I would listen to this over and over and over again. I would take notes. I would type it up. I would read over my notes. And I would begin to practice this because with every habit, I said to you, take three minutes, take five minutes, do this. I like to give you the how to do this, do more of this. Now, in my own life, personally, I practice all of these seven uh, habits, not perfectly. There, there have been some days when I haven't done them all, but I really practice my thinking. I really practice my words. You know, my dog Angel has been eating kind of weird lately, and I realized my thinking became fear. Is she all right? Why doesn't she like her treats? And I had to change my thinking. I'm like, she's playful. She's happy. She's drinking water. Maybe she don't want to eat that anymore. I shifted and changed and said, God, spirit, you're in me. Download the wisdom to me as to what I should do. And one of the main things I had to stop doing was worrying about it because when you meditate on what you don't want, you get more of that. And so just like you, I am having to practice this. Anything else? Well, we have two new Hosts on the Law of Attraction Radio Network. They're great. Uh, Mike Bo, Mark Bo Desar is one of them. And we have a, a young lady. I've listened to her. I think she's out of the UK. She's really good. So make sure you listen to everybody else. Dr. Michael Mosley and Jules Johnson. I think Dr. Montgomery. So y'all listen and feed and nurture your soul. So somebody said to me, what do you do every day? I said, I may listen two to three hours a day to someone. Why would I do that? Because I'm feeding and nurturing my soul. Sometimes I listen to my own self <laughs> and say, girl, I didn't know you said that. So nobody is coming to save you, rescue you. God is giving it to you because you got the power. You have the ability to be, do, and have anything that you desire. Well, that is it, everybody. Make sure that you have a great decision, that you make a decision to have a great week, to create just your most joyful, uh, happy, uh, healthy days. 
be radically grateful. And uh, I love all of you. Grateful that you took the time out to listen. And have a great week, everybody.